Welcome to this episode of Helam Changani. Now you're probably used to the conventional dome system of producing biogas, but this week we'll be talking to Dominic Kahumbu who'll be telling us of an easier technology of producing biogas with his company Flexi Biogas. Let's hear what he has to say. Thank you, Dominic, for joining us on um, Helam Changani. We're definitely eager to learn from you. Um, Flexi Biogas. Tell us just a bit, um, a brief of uh, what Flexi Biogas is. Um, well, Flexi Biogas is a new technology. We developed it over the last about four years. <laughs> but, go on. Um, after looking at the conventional uh, technologies that are available in biogas, yeah. um, they were developed uh, almost three centuries ago mm -hmm. and um, what they knew back then about biogas uh, was very limited um, you know 300 years ago so the technology they developed I mean don't get me wrong they do deserve you know Oscar awards or not Oscar awards uh, what do you call it um, uh, environmental awards and and what have you yeah. for absolute genius of their time yeah. but now we know so much more about biogas that the conventional technologies um, are still the same mm -hmm. so uh, you know we have it's, we have really worked on improving the former technologies mm -hmm. so our system now for instance it's above ground um, underground is cold so yeah. temperature is one of the key catalysts to uh, biogas production and so our system is above the ground and it's housed in a greenhouse so we are achieving much much higher temperatures which means that we're achieving far far higher uh, efficiency rates in um, in biogas digestion and methane production. Yeah. How, um, how far have you have you you know gone with this technology in terms of you know reaching to people, um, teaching them how to use this one in comparison to the other one that most people are used to and know about? Um, I would say we're very new in um, with this technology. Yeah. We've only been about two and a half to three years okay. in actual production. Before that, we were more R&D. We were testing the systems, giving them to the users, uh, letting them play with it, uh, correcting, uh, you know, their, correcting their compl everything they would complain about, we would improve the system. Yes. Till we got the uh, final product that you can see uh, behind us. And how has the response been from people? A bit slow in Kenya, I must admit. Yes. Um, we have, over three years, we have put in quite a number of systems. We're probably hitting close to a thousand systems in Kenya. Um, uh, other countries like Rwanda uh, have, have fully adopted the technology because of the efficiency. Uh, you only need one cow to produce all the gas you need for domestic use. Yeah. Uh, conventional systems, you need five cows. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so the efficiency level is so high. So in Rwanda, their, their zero grazing poverty alleviation program mm -hmm. is a one cow program. Yeah. And of course, the dome system cannot meet the, those sort of... Um, the dung from one cow cannot uh, meet the domestic use, yeah. but our system does. So the, Ugan so the Rwanda government has actually adopted this um, almost fully okay. into their programs. Um, so we're rolling it out there. Uh, they are, they're, they're adopting the technology much faster than here. They only saw 10 systems and they put out international tenders for the systems. Wow. So in Kenya, it's been a bit of a struggle yes. trying to get noticed, if you may. Yeah. You know, we've been on the shows, yeah. we've been in the media. Um, we can, we're, we're, we are what you call bootstrapping. We're selling one buyer, tells another person, it's through hearsay, it's through Facebook. We're trying to get into the national uh, biogas and the uh, poverty alleviation uh, national programs, uh, but it is a bit of a challenge. Why do you think Kenyans are not really responding, uh, you know, that fast compared probably to Rwanda? Um, partially, I would say, partially us, we have, have, haven't had the exposure. Um, we're a small company. We don't have the, the big money to do a big national campaign, uh, you know, roll out advertising in TV and what have you. The media has been very good. Um, uh, and also, I think partially because, you know, people are, are resistant to change. So they know the dome system. Um, uh, so it's, it's more a matter of just time before uh, I think people will uh, get themselves familiarized with the technology and then adoption should pick up. It's picking up, uh, you know, it has picked up over the last three years. So it is on an increase, 
Of course, we would like it to be uh, much, much, much faster than we're going. But, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As, as I was doing my research, I noticed you're not, you don't use, um, you don't necessarily have to have a cow. Uh, mm. Could you explain how else it could work? Okay. Be because of the, uh, the design of the yeah. system, yeah. conventional systems, you must have, if I may say, the cleanest poop. Cow dung is smooth, it is, uh, it's ready processed, you know, um, it's, re it's ready for a biogas digester. In fact, the first digesters will only run on cow dung, somewhat um, pig dung, but certainly won't run on chicken dung or anything else. Our systems, you don't, they don't mind what you feed them. Um, we normally start the systems using cow dung just to get the correct culture into the system. Um, but then you can switch. You can run on, on, on chicken dung, you can run on pig dung, human dung. Um, dog poop yeah. um, but not only that the higher the calorific value of the feed you feed a digester the higher the gas production so we also promote uh, with our farmers or our, our customers of the system mm -hmm. to grow castor which is a uh, considered a weed or a waste oh. plant okay. um, but it's extremely high in oil so vegetable oil will produce 50 to 60 times more gas than um, will cow dung so if you mix in these oil plants or restaurant waste is also very heavy in oil, mix it in with your, um, with your, with your, with your dung or whatever other waste you're feeding into the system yeah. and your gas production just rockets. Okay. Yeah. And how, how exactly does it work? I know you will show us later, but um, compared to the other system where I think you need, a, you, know, you need to dig and um, you need a lot of cow dung, how exactly does this other one work? When you mix, you know, the, the ratio, what amount of waste do you need? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay, from implementation, mm -hmm. uh, from installation, for instance, uh, we just had a customer this morning, the ladies who you met just yes, now. Yes. Um, she has paid by, by um, bank transfer, mm -hmm. so te telephone technology is very, very, um, uh, 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 doing very well for, for, the, for the technology. Yeah. Um, she's carrying the system today. We will send a technician tomorrow. Within three hours tomorrow, her system will be installed. Wow. It, it takes three hours to install. That's amazing. Yeah. Within three days, mm -hmm. um, it will have started gassing up. Within seven days, she'll be cooking. Within 10 to 12 days, it'll be um, running at optimum. Okay. And she'll be off uh, all her other um, uh, uh, forms of, of cooking fuel. Yeah. Um, the system, like I said, it installs in three hours because it's surface mounted. It's so compact, it will fit onto a motorcycle. So we can get it oh. into, yeah, we often transport it on bicycles and, and um, border borders. Okay. So we can get it into the most remote corners of the planet. Yeah. Um, it installs in three hours. The only technical component mm -hmm. to the uh, installation is the leveling of the ground. The ground has to oh, be absolutely okay. flat. Okay. Yeah. It's a cross-flow methodology, so you feed it from one end and it overflows from the other. So you're never mixing um, exiting feed yeah. or exiting substrate with substrate, substrate that has, that's going in, exactly. Okay. So the dome system, one of its uh, biggest inefficiencies yeah. is exactly that. They are designed to have an agitation methodology, uh, which is the mixing, the up and down of the uh, expansion chamber, mm -hmm. which stirs the, the main uh, drum, if you may, of the of the substrate. So what you're feeding in today is getting mixed with what was in there yesterday and what was in there, you know, a month ago, mm -hmm. and it if all all of it is it's like one uniform mix. It will move ac across to the expansion chamber and overflow, which means that what you put in today and yesterday hasn't even had time to ferment and it's already overflowing. And how much? How many times do I have to feed in to the? To, 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 do I have to feed it in? Um, we recommend to be fed every day if you have access to the waste. Yeah. Um, we'd like you just to get into a routine uh, because people tend to say, you know, tomorrow never comes. And people say, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. Ah, yeah. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. It looks like there's enough. I'll do it tomorrow. And then they start calling us and saying the system's not working. When in fact, it's just that somebody yeah. is not feeding the system. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's one of the biggest common problems. So we tell the people, get into a, uh, a routine, feed the system every day. If you don't have waste, Get into a collection of waste. Feed it twice a week, even if you're feeding it once a week. Just make sure you don't miss. Get into your schedule and stick to your schedule. So the mixing ratio is uh, one part, whatever it is you're feeding, whether it's vegetable waste or whether it's um, 
uh, uh, dung. Um, you mix that ratio of one to one with water. Now, again, the water doesn't need to be clean. Everybody says, ah, but it's very heavy on water. I don't have water because I come from a remote area. And we simply say, but don't you wash your, 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 your viombos in the kitchen? Don't you bathe? Don't you? And they're like, yeah, we do. So what do you do with that water? And we throw it out. They say, well, use it on the digester. Even if it's got soap in it, it doesn't matter. Um, soap is harmless to the digester. We also, we don't promote the use of uh, heavy detergent water, but the rinsing water that you use to rinse out your clothes after you've washed them in the soap, that water is, it's got so little detergent in it, it's not going to affect the uh, micro life inside the digester. If, if I'm a farmer, you know, somewhere and I want to start my, I want you to, you know, put in place for me, how much will it cost me to start to, to get one? Okay, we have three systems. Yeah. We have the small system, which is going at 46. Okay. That one is designed primarily as a, um, as a cooking replacement, a cooking fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, we pegged the system, the smaller system, on the cooking of maize and beans, or gideri. Yeah. Uh, we believe that once you've solved that gideri problem, you've solved Mama and Boga's problems. Yeah. Uh, you've solved all of them, because she will never, you know, the dome system, a lot of people will always cook gideri on firewood, but cook the rest of the meals on the, on the dome system. Mm -hmm. To me, you've added a problem to her because now she's collecting firewood and she's dealing with a, with a biogas digester. You're not alleviating the problems. Mm -hmm. So ours is a one-stop uh, alleviation. Mm -hmm. So we designed our system to give you enough gas to do that. It will cook your food, all your food and it will do all of your uh, water necessary for a family of up to about six people. Wow. The next system is uh, what we call the BG5 which will give you almost twice the amount of gas as the first one. Uh, it goes for 61,000. Uh, we find that people who um, use the smaller one wish they had the bigger one. Because once they have all of that extra time, those three hours that they were spending collecting firewood, they now have three hours free every single day, but they don't have energy because the digester was only designed for cooking. So they want a bigger one because the more energy they have, the more productive they can be. Yeah. So we say that um, the lack of energy is the driver of poverty. So once you alleviate those two problems, time management and energy, and you've got all of your surplus um, fertilizer coming from the system, a bit of education on value addition to crops, and you are out of poverty. The third system is 76,000. Um, that system will produce twice the amount of gas as the previous one of the BG5. Um, that gas now can be used to run machinery. So you can run um, a generator. We have a, we have a, di a, a, specialized di digest a, a specialized generator. We call it a bio-DC genset, which basically produces high voltage, um, a three, uh, uh, three kilowatt um, generator which you would use to run your shaft cutter, you could use it to run your milking machine, you could use it to run your, your water and all of these um, agricultural tools. Yeah. At the same time, it's running an alternator that's backing up power in batteries. Mm -hmm. So you only need to run the generator for the limited amount of time you need to do those heavy chores, yeah. maybe half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour in a day. Okay. Yeah. About that, um, how, how often should one feed did I ask that? How often yeah. should one feed it, you know, so that uh, it will be enough, say, for one day? Yeah. yeah or, yeah, for two days or a week? Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your gas, if you look at the digester, you want to make sure that it's between your knee and your, your thigh. We advise the farmers to feed it every morning. Okay. Um, get into a routine. Don't, uh, you know, don't, 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 don't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but once the users get used to the system, um, many a time they just feed it when it looks low uh, because they, you know, they are, it's, a, it's like a pet animal. The more you feed it and the more water you give it, mm -hmm. the higher the production. So, um, you know, they, 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 they get in tune with their system much rather than telling us how to operate it. They get used to it. And then they talk to each other as well. Yeah. So they share ideas and they're, 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 you know, they're putting in different things into their systems and we're getting a lot of feedback from them as well. Yeah. yeah. We'll take a short break, but when we come back, Dominic will be showing us a bit of the process of how the flexi biogas works and also th some of the benefits of the biogas. Um, no training. 
No, I, the first time I saw uh, biogas, yeah. um, I was about 10. Yeah. I saw the blue flame okay. um, and it was stunning. And then I was lifted up, when I asked where is the gas coming from, I was lifted up and put on top of uh, what's called a floating dome system. Yeah. And it was like a big drum floating on this liquid. I can still remember very vividly looking at the flame and looking at this thing I was standing on thinking, this isn't going to happen. You know, they just didn't make sense. Um, a small flame and this monstrosity of a construction. Yeah. It just didn't, it didn't, it didn't click that this would ever be, you know, would, would make sense. Mm. And so I've been toying with, with biogas ever since. I was, you know, putting cups inside cups, tins inside tins, drums inside drums. Um, I was inverting, uh, you know, big rotor mold uh, plastic tanks. Um, I was given a challenge by um, my sister Paula, who is the, at the time she was the, uh, the chairperson of FONAP, the Friends of Nairobi National Park. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's a conservationist. Yeah. She actually is running the um, Hands Off Our Elephants campaign yeah. at the moment. Okay, yeah. and um, she gave me the challenge to find a, a solution for the Maasai community living behind Narub, Nairobi National Park yeah. who are cutting down the trees oh. and it's being turned into charcoal yeah. and it's being sold in Kitengela. So they were trying to win the hearts of these Maasai by sensitizing them and providing them with reasons not to cut down the trees, giving them, well, proposing to them uh, solutions and how to generate income from their land as opposed to you know um, selling it up and cutting down the trees and destroying it and so i proposed flexible biogas um, portable flexible biogas systems yeah. Yeah. and um, basically uh, flexible biogas was born we put the first system in masai mara um, i believe the first system is still running um, the model then has completely changed because what we did was the Maasai was very hard to, for them to uptake. Yeah. Uh, their biggest concern was, was what are our women going to do if they, if they don't uh, collect firewood? Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, um, but the people in Machakos, the people in Central, the people in Rift Valley, mm -hmm. they have virtually complete, finished their trees. Yeah. Firewood is uh, extremely hard to come by. Yeah. Um, Nyanza is even worse. They are cooking with, with maize cobs and maize stalks. Mm -hmm. So we're now, they're now uh, uptaking the technology. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, it, 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 we, the first users, the first models had technical issues with them. The people, when you, when you come up with a new design of anything, don't expect the people to do with it what you think should be done with it, because yeah. they will figure out wh how, how, how to, to make it stop working, how to yes. break it. Oh, yeah. And so this went on for about a year or two years. We were replacing systems, fixing all the issues with the users, mm -hmm. until it got to the stage where there was nothing more to fix. The users were happy. They were, they, there was no complaints, no issues with the system. Yeah. And so that's when it became, we standardized the, the, the systems, we standardized the components, um, we set up like an assembly line. The volume started picking up and of course NGOs and other organizations that wanted to um, uh, buy, per, buy and purchase systems, we needed then to formalize and um, now become a, 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 an official company, a registered company. And um, we basically moved from there. And we were claiming on our Facebook that we had a system that could produce enough gas for the domestic homestead with the dung from one cow. Yeah. Uh, this is not achievable with any other biogas system. Mm -hmm. They were like, prove it. They, we, we joke with them and say they actually came out here to prove it can't. Yeah. Not to prove it can, but to prove yeah. it can't. Yeah. So they put in two pilots, 10 systems in Nakuru and 10 systems in Rwanda, which they monitored independently. Mm -hmm. And um, within three months, Rwanda had completely bought in. They said, this is the technology, this is the technology we're going to use. And uh, IFAD has since then been supporting us in, because of the, uh, the, 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 the proof that it does work, uh, took us to India. Um, the India IIT, the Indian Institute for Technology, who we are now partnering with also, yeah. um, also in the beginning had wrote off the technology they said been there done that can't work and we said stop saying it can't let's put you put one in for you and then tell us and within three four months they did a 360 and said this works yeah. so they've also endorsed the system okay. so we're looking at scaling up there um, also mm -hmm. so if i are very instrumental in that they are they're helping us to to push us into government large 
uh, large biogas programs. Uh, we also have a few systems in Cambodia, uh, some systems in Ghana, some systems in... We've just shipped this morning, just before you arrived, mm -hmm. 45 systems have gone to Mali. Wow, so, so we, you're we are next week to go and train like everywhere, yeah. worldwide, basically. Yeah, we are, we are, we are actually international. Oh, wow. We've got one in Brazil, we've got one in... Um, I think there's two in America. And you started them? Yes. I mean, they're you, you're yes, the, you're the, you're the design, founder. The design is the design, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. God gave us teeth, so we chew before we swallow. Okay. So that's what we've done. We've just chewed up all of that marketplace waste. Yeah. We've got a nice swill, which is, as you saw me feeding water into the system, we now have the correct texture. Yeah. And we just pour it down the throat and into the system. Okay. And that's it. For the cow dung, you don't need to do this though? No, cow dung is already smooth. Yeah. So you just need to mix it with water okay. and then pour it in. When I get the package, do I get this as well? No. Okay. Yeah, these, this one, okay. these are more for if you're going to be dealing with um, market uh, uh, waste. Yes. Okay. Market waste and stuff that needs chopping. And oh, right. So normally you can chop it with a panga. Yeah. You can, what have you. But um, what we'll demonstrate is that once you get to a certain level, then you can have a generator running off the biogas that provides electricity to run this. So it's ah, all in a loop. Yeah. Everything is yeah. together. So okay. it makes sense to. Instead of spending hours trying to chop up what mm -hmm. you saw me grinding in a few minutes, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it will really Make work improve easier. efficiency, exactly, mm. and time management. So it's like a tube, but it's pillow shaped, and as you can see, there's no construction, there's no, there's no digging oh. um, underneath. Yeah. So the only important part of the installation mm -hmm. is actually the the ground Lovely. must be a hundred percent level so you oh. were talking earlier about um, yeah, how, how to make money from your yes, system yes you can sell the fertilizer it's very valuable uh, okay. fertilizer okay and notice there's no smell yeah amazing there's nothing in <laughs> there's nothing in there to rot we say okay. imeva there's nothing uh, nothing left to yeah, to yeah, ferment or yeah. break down This technology by Flexi Biogas in partnership with International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, has many advantages, with cooking gas being the main benefit. It is one of the best ways of saving energy and the cheapest. The gas is also non-poisonous, just in case you forget to switch it off. This technology has many other benefits including providing electrical energy, powering generators and farmers are encouraged to use the system. Now we've learned that you can turn your kitchen waste, your market waste into good biogas and rich organic fertilizer. Well, I have been your host, Wairi Mombogwa. Join me next time, same time, different location. Thank <laughs> you.